Hello, Ralph Eden, and to those of you who are in the uh, southwest Kansas region of the Church of God. So I know some of you, no doubt, my name is Gary Kendall, and I lived in Satana for a couple of years with my parents, Paul and Mary Ruth Kendall, and then went to Mid-America when it was down in Houston and pastored in Kansas City at Indian Creek Community Church for many years. And now I lead a citywide ministry called Love KC. And Ralph asked me if I would be willing to do a short video and tell you a little bit about the benefits of using Bless Every Home. It's an app that anyone can use. It's free. You can find it on Google Play or on iTunes. And I'm going to give you just a short little description of how we use it in Kansas City through the ministry that I lead now called Love KC. So one of the things that I think is important for all of us is if we want to reach people for Jesus, we need a plan, right? So I'm sure that you have the right heart or you probably wouldn't be doing what you're doing. But sometimes it's more than heart. You need a nap or you need like something to help you accomplish what you want to do. And then you take that and you put it with your plan and you've got something pretty special. So I like to think of this as a, a way of putting a tool in the hand of your people. It's up to you to train your people and to equip them but once you've done that, you need to put a tool in their hands that helps them be successful. So I'm going to go to um, my screen now and, and download this or share with you this slideshow. And the slideshow is going to kind of walk you through how to use the app that's called Bless Every Home. It's just like it sounds, blesseveryhome.com. So I think you're looking at my screen now. Love KC is a ministry we lead. It's in Kansas City. We serve over 200 churches, all different denominations, and the primary tool or app that we use for people to share their faith is called Bless Every Home. And we call this the Every Person Plan. And our conviction is if you don't have a plan for every person, you definitely won't reach every person. And if you have a plan, it doesn't mean that you'll accomplish everything in your plan, but it does mean you have a better chance of hitting a target if you have the target than if you don't have the target, right? That only makes sense. So at Love KC, we're doing what you're doing. In a sense, we're equipping people to live as disciples. And then we want to have, make disciples who make disciples. So in our thinking, every person who is a disciple should be able to make a disciple. They should be able to be a part of that that um, continuum from the first conversation to the time a person is a disciple making a disciple. They may not do every step. They may be gifted more for some parts of that continuum than other, but they should be on that continuum somewhere. So we like to say we exist to help disciples live their faith with confidence because sometimes the world has shaken our confidence in who we are. So we exist to help disciples live their faith with confidence and know how to share, how to help their friends find Jesus. People have that innate desire that comes from God, and a lot of them have developed some skills, but we want to help sharpen their skills. It's like sharpening the blade of an ax so that the ax will get right through the tree, and we want, we want their blade to be sharp. You know, Jesus summed all of this effort up that we're talking about today when he said the two great commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so love God, most people have a plan for that. If you ask them, they could probably tell you, I'm going to pray more. I'm going to go to church more. I'm going to go to a small group. I'm going to learn to fast. I'm going to learn to uh, journal or a variety of other things. But if you ask them, what's their plan for helping to love their neighbor, they'll look at you a little bit funny sometimes. I call it the deer in the headlights look. Like they think this is supposed to just happen. Uh, they don't necessarily have a plan for it. Maybe like the Good Samaritan, they'll see someone who needs help and they'll help them. And, and while that's a good place to start, and I love the story of the Good Samaritan, we use that story all the time. It shouldn't be the only way. We're just waiting for something spontaneous to happen. We want to actually have a plan. And so we like to say that we want to equip and mobilize disciples to live on mission where they live, learn, work, and play because those are the areas where they actually have influence and where they are going to interact with other people who don't know Jesus. That's where the people are. Uh, we like to say, don't just go to church, be the church everywhere you go. 
And in the story of the Good Samaritan, the neighbor was uh, a person who had, they had some proximity with this person. They were in their sphere of influence. That Greek word is oikos. And when the Philippian jailer came to Christ, he reached us all of his oikos. All of us have an oikos that's between 20 and 80 people. Some introverts maybe have a one of 10. And maybe you're an introvert, but 10 is still significant, right? Every single person is significant in God's eyes. And so we have neighbors in our life. Uh, the, some of them are coworkers. Some of them actually geographically live near us. Some are in our sphere of influence because they're extended family. Some are, are friends from college or high school, or they're friends from a third place like a gym or um, a local coffee house. And so what we encourage people to do is live a simple pray, care, share, disciple-making lifestyle. And we call these people lights. And in Kansas City, we work to see every single neighborhood, there's 21,000 adopted by a light. Uh, presently, I should change this number now, we have 3,315 lights in Kansas City, or 14% of the city is adopted now by people who are adopting their neighborhood. And you can look at the, the map more closely. The ones that are bright are active. The ones that are dull haven't, haven't been active in some time. So we have some work to get everybody active. Nevertheless, what we're praying is that every neighborhood in the city would be adopted. Every family would be prayed for by name. And that every person would hear the good news of Jesus from a friend. So that's the plan that we have. And we're trying to put that plan together I would encourage you to think beyond your church, but to think about whatever city you live in, or maybe the county, if you're, if you're living rurally in southwestern Kansas, is there a way to have a plan uh, for your city or a plan for your county? And actually, every home, Bless Every Home, is a national program that has over 60,000 lights now. And um, there's, there's a, a, a plan, if you want to use it in the app for every single city, every single county in the whole United States. In Kansas City, we're adding over 60 lights a month. And now it's not three years, but it's over four years now. So this is very effective if you use it. It's like anything else. You know, a tool is only as good as a person wielding the tool, right? So this is a great tool, but we'll have to train and equip our people to use it if, if we want to see the kind of, of growth that we want to see. If you go to blesseveryhome.com, you can sign up for your account. And when you look at this uh, landing page, you're going to see now that there's over 2 million prayers that are prayed. So I definitely need to update my slideshow. If you begin to sign up an account for yourself, you're going to see your neighborhood. And then you're going to be able to color code your neighbors that are in your neighborhood. Um, there's a short video here. I'm going to have us watch it. It actually tells you about this better than I can. So let's watch it together here. Raise up warriors, Lord, who will fight on their knees. We can use the technology of today and use it as a harvest tool to reach souls for Christ. And now we have this incredible tool, blesseveryhome.com. Sign up free at blesseveryhome.com and you'll receive a map and list of your neighbors along with the tools to pray for them by name, care for and share the gospel with them. You can even highlight your pray, care, share journey with each neighbor home using the colored icons. Each neighbor home has its own journal. You can also choose to receive scheduled reminder emails with the next five neighbor homes to pray for that day. What are we waiting on? The harvest is now. Our prayer is that by the end of 2020, every single home in America is being prayed for by name. Join Bless Every Home and see how prayer can change your community. Raise up a generation, Lord, that will take light into this world, that they will proclaim that there is salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise them up, Lord, raise them up. So that's, that's an exciting uh, video, isn't it? It came from the, uh, the War Room movie, if you've ever seen the War Room movie. 
but it shows you how you can have your own account and how that uh, through that account you can be able to um, reach the people who are in your in your neighborhood. So I'm going to leave that now and escape out Raise of it. Up, oh, started it again by accident. I'm going to escape out of that and go back to the slideshow. And we need to get to the right slideshow. There we go. So um, let's keep moving here. When you start your account, what you're going to see is every day you'll get a, an email. And well, actually, I say every day. You can choose to receive them five days a week, six days or seven, but you're going to get five neighbor names and uh, for which you can pray every day. You're going to be able to go to the map and by the map, see where they live. You'll have a scripture to pray for your neighborhood uh, that day. I can almost set my, my watch to the fact from a time that a person signs up, they'll start having conversations within a week that they didn't have before. It's like God's ready. He's just waiting. Uh, God's always going ahead of us. I love the Henry Black, Black Abbey quote, join God where he's already at work. And so God is working ahead of us. We need to, to join him and begin to pray for our neighbors. When you do that, it's going to create a card. And if you go to the map, you'll see these circles that shows you who you're praying for that day. If you click on it, you'll see a card <clears throat> and you can add notes here. You can edit it later if they move. These are updated every six weeks. They come from what's called second party data. So it's a data that's easy to find out there on the internet, but uh, Bless Every Home has just gathered it together for you and served it back up to you. You can make them red if you are praying for them. You can make them yellow if you have a caring relationship, which means you know a little bit about them. You've established some kind of relationship with them. And then green is you've shared your story or the story of Jesus with them. And blue is they've accepted Christ. And so you can keep your notes and see your reds turn to yellows, your yellows turn to green, your green turn to blue. When, when that happens, you may have a neighborhood that looks kind of like this. Now, you won't if you're not living in a city, but this is what my neighborhood looks like. You can make it bigger than 40. Mine is about 160 something, I think. And you can see that I've been trying to meet my neighbors and the yellows are people that I have a caring relationship, but I haven't yet shared Christ. The green, I have shared Christ, or at least my story, some part of the story. Blue are people that have accepted Christ and five of my neighbors have accepted Christ through conversations, not at church, but just through conversations, friends talking to friends. But I've lived in my neighborhood for 20 years. So um over time, you, you can see this kind of a difference happen. And then you'll, you'll be able to look at your um, actual dashboard. So there's 162 people in my neighborhood. And uh, people ask me sometimes, what is this zero up here? You can, you can invite people through the app. You have to know their name and you have to know their email. So I don't typically do that. I'll invite them through a conversation usually or like something we're doing here. But um, obviously, you can see there's nine people inside my neighborhood who've, who've accepted Christ. I didn't lead all of them to Christ. Uh, some of them I've encouraged to become lights uh, like we are. And there's seven lights in my neighborhood out of the nine. So that's exciting. And you can do the same. Uh, so I asked Ralph, uh, if you're doing this, bless every home, uh, could you also consider if you might be reaching people digitally? So you're reaching people physically through your neighborhood. I would also encourage you to prayer walk your neighborhood at least once a week. If you do that, it's not only good for you for exercise, but it will help you have spiritual insight to your neighborhood. But let's say that you are doing that. I'd like to talk to you for five minutes on how to help people find Jesus digitally. We know that today a person's source of truth is usually Google or Siri or Alexa. If they want to check out anything, that's where they go. And um, people are searching digitally. They may not um, tell you that they are. They may not walk into your church unannounced, but they are they're out there searching. They're using the internet for virtually everything. Imagine with me for a so moment. let's watch this a video. Billboard in your city. 
I'm not trying to sell you shoes, get you to contact a lawyer or open a new bank account, but instead one that's sharing a message of hope. What if while you scroll through your socials, you encountered a video showing a relatable picture of Jesus? Or you're watching TV and you see a commercial encouraging you to think differently about the person of Jesus and his relevance in your life. What might that do to your city? Well, that's exactly what's happening across the country. He Gets Us is a campaign designed to show people that Jesus understands our hardships because he experienced them too. It's a chance for people to encounter the real Jesus and encourage them to take a next step to learn more or connect to a local church. Whoa. That's huge, but how does it work? Well, when someone sees an ad like this, they'll visit this site and they'll have an opportunity to learn more and connect. Some might want prayer, need help, or want to chat more about Jesus. And for those who want to dive deeper, we'll connect them with the nearest participating church. Now, what if your church wants to get involved? Well, that's easy too. Sign up on Glue and complete your church's profile. Next, grab some volunteers or designate someone on your team to respond to your connections. We'll take it from there, handle the tech, and send people right to your inbox. Then, you get to do what you do best, build relationships. So let's recap. When you look around your city, you'll probably still see this, but you'll also see this campaign. A message of true hope, encouraging people to think differently about Jesus and his relevance in our lives. If your church is ready to connect with people in a whole new way, join us and let this incredible campaign bring new people to you for help, conversation, and hope. So this is a national campaign. It's had over 31 million views and 202 people a day are um, either texting or clicking to chat or saying they want more information. And you can, you can be a part of this. Your subscription is free and you can go to the, um, the QR code that I'm gonna share later and you'll be able to see the QR code. Just shoot the QR code, it gives you your free start. They don't take your credit card so you can stop anytime. But people from your zip code respond. And when they respond, then they are invited to be connected to a person who is a follower of Jesus. And all of us in our church have people that really want to reach people for Jesus. You have people praying for more spiritual conversations right now than they're actually having. And so this is a way to connect to them. He Gets Us is the campaign that you're seeing right now. And it's aimed at transforming the attitudes and perceptions of our culture about Jesus and encouraging people to pursue him, to trust him. Glue is the platform that's underneath it all. And so I like to say that he gets us as kind of like the house. Uh, glue is like the uh, foundation and the things that are needed for the house to work right are in the foundation or in the walls. So glue is like the stage that you stand on uh, helping you do what you do when you preach or teach. In this case, it's helping you be able to be connected to the digital world. There's really three th things we're trying to accomplish. One is to change perceptions about Jesus, to show his humanity so people can identify with them, but also to call up Christians to act more authentically like Jesus. And I imagine you know some Christians that need to be called up to act more like Jesus. And then the third thing is to help the whole Christian ecosystem be better connected. This campaign lasts through the end of the year. There's time for you to get involved in it. You can check it out. It's free, so you might as well. And then uh, the thing is, you can a see a video like a this. He saw people suffering. Anxiety ran high. Hatred rose. I'll prepare a feast and bring them together, he thought. But some refused to join him. He was heartbroken because he wanted everyone to be filled, not with food and wine, but with compassion. So that's the campaign. He gets us, all, all of us. You'll see in the campaign, these are the kinds of uh, themes or subject matters. Um, Jesus was arrested, he was bullied, he was betrayed. Um, he was born to a teen mom. Jesus was homeless. He was an immigrant. There's probably about, about 12 different themes. And you can go to YouTube and type in He Gets Us Ads, and you can subscribe to it, and you'll see all the ones that presently exist and the new ones as they come. 
And so um, just to close that part of it, uh, when people see the ads, they have, they have these choices. They can chat with someone 24 seven. They can uh, say they wanna read more or they can say they wanna connect and talk to someone about, about spiritual things. And that's where you come in. So I would encourage you to shoot the QR code and get started. You'll have people certainly inside of your church who are looking for spiritual conversations. It often isn't the pastor. It might be someone with the gift of hospitality or someone with the gift of evangelism or prayer. Those are the, the most likely people. It could be the shut-in. It could be an elderly person. It could be someone who's a techie geek. Maybe these aren't the people that you would use for uh, your pulpit, but they might be exactly the person to talk to a spiritual digital explorer. So here's a QR code. It's a six-month scholarship. You can just shoot it and you'll get a free trial. And love to have you be a part of that. Ralph, thank you for giving me a chance to talk to the people today in Western Kansas about uh, Bless Every Home and about digital evangelism. Thank you for your heart, brother. Not everybody has the heart that you have for reaching the lost. I love the heart that you have. And um, sorry I couldn't be with you guys personally today, but I'm glad to share this video with you and I hope it helps. So God bless you.